Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into media communications. My guest today is uh, Chris Sirico. He is the Senior Manager of Communications for Verizon, and welcome to the show. Anthony, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So yeah. where did you go to school? Uh, I'm a proud graduate of Boston College. Uh, I lo Go Eagles. Uh, I loved, loved my experience at BC. Um, English communication double major with a minor in journalism. And at the time, I thought I really wanted to be a sports broadcaster because really? that was my big thing. I, you know, I got uh, introduced to the whole Flutie play, you know, the, the, the famous play, you know. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, that school looks awesome. And then I went there and it's so great. And then I realized, okay, this is not exactly the path I think I want to take. And it's taken a few turns since then. So, so let's just go back in high school of before course. we get into college. Yeah. Um, when did it all begin for you in high school? Was it freshman year of high school, senior year of high school? When did you start thinking about going to college? That's a great question. Um, I, well, there are two, I guess there are two different ways I could approach this. I always loved writing. So uh, from a little kid, uh, when I was a little kid, I would just write like these fictional stories about me and my friends doing all sorts of fun adventures and things like that. And I loved it. My teachers really kind of picked up on that and encouraged me to keep going down that path. And that's always been the one consistent in my life. So when I hit um, middle and high school, I'm, I'm the son of two retired public school teachers. Oh. So the value of education was instilled in me, at, in me in a very young age. Yeah. So um, they were the first in their families to go to college, I believe. So uh, they, they respected it on multiple levels. And they, were, they knew that college was an exceptional opportunity not for everyone, but right. you know, but they were very happy to be able to provide that for, for me and my two older siblings. So my sister went to Fairfield University, where I almost went, I love Fairfield. Brother went to Georgetown, and I went to Boston College. And my parents went to Fordham, so it's a Jesuit clean sweep, <laughs> so uh, for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, so I always knew that if I were lucky enough uh, that I would, I would pursue college in that respect. So now you get to uh, college, and what do you think of Boston College when you get there? I'm very lucky. Uh, I, it, I didn't make friends right away, because I think that that's a little tough for people when you're coming from your you know, bubble of a high school experience and then you're going to college. Uh, it was a little bit of a tough grind, and then I found, um, I, I love to sing, so I found an a cappella group on campus, oh. and I joined them. The Boston College Acoustics, still the best, of course. Uh, <laughs> a co-ed group out of BC that was founded in 1993. So they just celebrated their 30th anniversary last year. Uh, and it was like my family away from my family. And they just were lovely, lovely people. I got to sing a little bit. And that, that sort of introduced me to all sorts of arts uh, uh, exploration, um, community events, everything like that. And that was a ton of fun. Uh, I actually wound up going to sing the national anthem at Fenway Park, which is funny because I'm a Yankees fan, or a Yankees <laughs> fan under my shirt that day, just to make sure everything was fine. But I loved it, and I was very lucky to have found my people right away when I got there. Great. So now you graduate college. Yes. How does one go from graduating college to becoming the senior manager of communications at Verizon? That's a great loaded question. Thankfully, this is a, we've got a few minutes to play with here. <laughs> so, uh, so I um, spent the first 17 years of my career as a journalist. So I, as I hinted at earlier, I thought, well, maybe I'll go into sports broadcasting. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I love watching sports. I don't think I could talk about 24-7. And it's also, like every other industry where everyone wants to do it, extremely competitive. Yeah, sure. I'm not afraid of competitive, but I wanted to do something that I knew that I would love. So I broadened my reach a little bit, and I started working at a small newspaper just north of New York City called the Journal News. And that was my hometown newspaper. Uh, I started covering for uh, my hometown for a weekly newspaper called uh, Review Press. And I cut my teeth on everything. So I was basically a general assignment reporter. So late shifts, um, municipal board meetings, um, feature stories, you name it, I covered it. And it made me a much more well-rounded reporter and journalist in general because there was nothing that I would not be assigned to. And yeah. at first, it was a real challenge. I actually barely had gotten my driver's license by the time I'd, I'd gotten my job. So the first couple of weeks while I was just waiting for all that paperwork to go through, my parents were actually driving me there, have a good day at work. And I'm like, <laughs> how old am I? But uh, but it all worked out. And then uh, fast forward about nine years, I started covering entertainment and lifestyle reporting, and I loved that. That was really my niche. And so for the second half of my journalism career, I really explored celebrities, 
uh, television, music, uh, uh, film. I really loved covering that. Um, and that was a tremendous part of my career that I loved dearly. Um, but I don't have to tell anyone out there, it's, it's a tough industry to stay in and there's not a lot of stability in it anymore. And I should also say it's more important than ever um, to have credible news uh, that's informed and reaching the right audiences, reaching really all audiences when it's done well. Sure. And um, uh, fast, so for the first 11 years of my career, I was at the Journal News. I got laid off there with a large group of people. And then I kind of found myself working in different places. I was a film reporter for about a year as a freelancer for the Daily News. Uh, I did a couple of features for Esquire, which I loved doing. Um, I wrote for the Today Show for about five years as well as a freelancer. Really just sort of doing anything and everything, partially to kind of get by because I'm a hustler by nature. And journalism doesn't pay well. I mean, it's, it's crucial for society, but it doesn't pay well. You don't sure. do it. When my retired teachers are like, you're not making enough money, my parents who are retired teachers are like, you're not making enough money. That's usually a sign it's not a <laughs> lucrative industry, but it's a passion-based one. So to actually answer your question, um, I burned out on it. I got laid off again. I think I'd been laid off three or four times in my career. And for the last, and the, the last time when I had been laid off, I was like, you know what? I, I, I think I'm done with this. And that was a very tough decision for me to make at that stage of my career. I, you know, I'm in my late 30s, by no means like retirement age, by no means done. But for anyone at any age to have to stop and start over and use those same skills in a different way, or maybe just completely start over, it's terrifying. Sure. So I spent a few years uh, working as a freelance writer for tech companies. So I started with Google, a little place called Google. Uh, one of my co-workers at my, the last place where I worked as a journalist said, hey, you, can you take this complex stuff and make it interesting? I said, I don't know. He said, yes, you can. And he sent it my way for $75, which I was thrilled by. And also, like, the masthead of, you know, freelancing for Google is nice. Sure. That turned into a few more assignments. And then I started working for a place called Avado. And then fast forward a little bit, uh, there's a full-time opportunity at Verizon that opens up. And my now wife, who was then my girlfriend, was like, you should really you know, look into this. And she works actually in brand at Verizon. So if you saw the new logo change recently, she actually worked on that campaign. <laughs> so small world. And long story short, very long story short, not uh, too short, um, that's how I wound up at Verizon. So now I work in communications, uh, essentially public relations for Verizon on a local level. Um, I work in the Atlantic North market. Uh, which is everything from the northern tip of Maine to uh, D.C. Metro and a little bit of Pennsylvania thrown in for good measure. Twelve states and D.C. Wow. covering everything from proactive campaigns to responding to media about anything and everything, whether it's you know a new cell tower, uh, a rare outage. Uh, we try not to have them, but when we have them, we, we try to be ready with the right information. So. so now you do everything communications just for the mid-Atlantic region? Uh, for the Northeast, yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you name it, I pretty much have a part in it. I don't do it alone, uh, but it's everything from you know public relations, communications, uh, proactive, reactive, you name it, I'm probably involved a little so bit. So now is there any type of products that you have that you can talk about? Sure. That maybe college kids need? Sure, I think so. Um, funny you should mention that. So <laughs> one of the nice things over here, and these are some demo models over here. These are uh, 5G home and Fios boxes. Um, so if you're uh, lucky enough to live in a region in the Northeast that has uh, Verizon Fios, this is the 100% fiber optic um, uh, uh, network that we offer. Uh, extremely fast, uh, really nice, and you can actually get it now through my home for uh, as little as $35 a month. And my home is uh, one of our programs where you pick your internet plan, you pick your streaming services, and you can stream away uh, oh. with both your internet and your, you know, and your TV streaming services of choice for a very uh, good value. This is very similar. This is a 5G home box. This, is, um, this takes the internet signal from outside your home and through the wonders of technology converts it to Wi-Fi <laughs> to power all your devices. So these are some of the things that, uh, that students can use in off-campus apartments and such. One of the nice things we also have right now is the opportunity to do um, Verizon Home Device Protect. Uh, and it's a bit of a misnomer in a good way because people think, oh, okay, well, it just protects devices at home. Well, you actually get a second residence with these, and that includes like an off-campus college apartment mm -hmm. where you can protect all your devices and make sure that everything is protected for just $19 a month. So that's a nice thing that we offer too. We also have uh, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus. 
this thing is beautiful. Oh, wow. So what I love about this is, it, first of all, obviously it runs on Verizon's 5G Ultra Wideband Network, plug, plug, plug. But what I like about this too is it is a, uh, it has AI capabilities. So what you can do is you can actually, uh, if you're on, say, Instagram and you hold uh, and you see something you like, you can actually hold down the navigation button, circle it, and then it'll give you live results of what you're looking at. You know, oh. and, and it can help you like if it's a if it's a bag, you can order a bag. If it's a shirt, it'll tell you where you can get that. So that's circle the search with Google. It's it's actually built into this thing. A beautiful camera on the back too. So always good to make sure your selfies are on point when you're on campus. <laughs> uh, got this wonderful thing over here. This is the um, the Soundcore Boom Two. I love the pretty colors on the side too because it actually it, they bump out with the bass when it starts playing. And you can get this for thirty dollars off because you know what's studying on campus. Well, a little bit of a study break. You can relax with this. <laughs> and then last but not least, we've got some uh, Ray Ban Meta sunglasses here. I, there's a long list of reasons why this is cool, not just because it's a timeless style of the, the Wayfarers, but what's nice about them is you can actually take, you can say, hey Meta, take a picture, and it'll actually take a picture of no. using these little cameras over here. You can say, hey Meta, tell me about what I'm looking at right now, and it uses AI capabilities to tell you exactly what you're looking at. So technology comes a long way, and what's one of the reasons why Verizon is such a cool, fun place to work, because they go, oh, you know, it's internet. It's a lot more than that, as it turns out. Yeah. So those are a lot of the back-to-school items that we have right now that are that may be of interest to you. So users. now, um, is that part of your daily uh, uh, position of, of working in communications? Is some of these products? Yes, that's a great. It's a great question. So basically, um, when we have promos and services, part of my job is to let people know, and we do that in a lot of different ways. It'll be like segments like this one we'll talk about it. Uh, so it's a very meta moment right now, but I'll do segments like these. Uh, I'll, I'll sometimes go on, on television stations proactively and say, hey, we've got you know, a back to school segment coming up. Well, we'd love to talk about these gadgets. Sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes if there's an outage uh, and there's a local station that wants to reach out to us, I'll chat with our network team and I'll find out exactly what's going on, get back to the station with you know, real time results of what's going on. Uh, and so it's everything from promoting products and services to making sure that we're communicative about everything that's going on at Verizon. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it's never the same day twice, I can assure you of that. So now, do you do um, college campus uh, interviewing and things like that? Do you find kids we do. on college campus? That's a great question. I know we have recruiters. I can't imagine we wouldn't be on uh, college campuses uh, at, at select colleges for uh, you know, career days and things like that. Uh, so we have a we have a, a really incredible marketing team that works on those events to make sure that people know what we do and can sort of you know facilitate those connections. And we have recruiters as well in, the, in that department as well. Now, can students also do internships at Verizon? Yes, in fact, we are we love our interns at Verizon. We give them the mic. Uh, we have them highly featured uh, these last few months on Inside Verizon, the the Instagram handle Inside Verizon and also on LinkedIn, we've given them the camera and the mic, and we've just let them sort of show us like what they're doing, um, where they're excelling, how their experience is shaping them in their careers. So it, we really, I think we only had one, we had a lot of applicants and only about 1% were selected to be interns. So it is competitive, really? but we, we put them to the best kind of work and they seem to really love what they're doing. Um, and it's great. I was lucky to have a really good internship myself, but it was in a completely different field. I actually interned at Sports Illustrated uh, in event marketing, which is sort of connected to what I'm doing now. But at the time, I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. So to see people work in technology, where you know that technology in some way, shape, or form is going to continue to shape our society, it's exciting. It's exciting yeah. to see them do that. Now, does Verizon do it all across the country? Do they, do they find That's support? a good question. I think, um, it's, you can see the former journalist in me is acknowledging every good question you're asking. So you've done this a while and it shows. <laughs> um, I know for sure we do it in Basking Ridge, which is where we're headquartered here in New Jersey. Um, but I can't imagine we wouldn't, we wouldn't also do that across the country. But I'm not 100% sure of that. To be clear. Now, do you, do you interact with any college students? Yes. So we have a social media contributor on the comms team. Uh, her name is Madison. Um, she actually uh, is <laughs> she's the daughter of a, a former director at Verizon. And it's amazing because uh, uh, Marie McGahee, she 
ran the show for so many things that we did in the comms department. And so to see the next generation come in and Madison is incredible at what she does. Like she's got her own following on TikTok. She helped me with a recent video that I did talking about uh, the planet alignment and how to best capture it on your phone. She came up with great ideas on the spot. So it's so invigorating to work with the next generation of tech pioneers yeah. who know to, how to attack it from ways that appeal to audiences that I no longer have like my finger on the pulse of. Like, she's on it and she's living it. And to be able to connect with people and ideas like that, that's exciting. That's really fun. So are they getting deep involved in the social media? Is that is that where Verizon but is it's, going? Yes, but it's not exclusive to that. I mean, we have people working with our network teams. We have people working with uh, the consumer side of things. We have people working in the Verizon business side of things. So the, it's not just social media. And I hate, I don't want to put it that way because social media is arguably more important, uh, more of a force than ever in yeah, that respect. Sure. But every facet of the business has interns represented at Verizon. And that's really cool too, because some, we're going to have to figure out ways to carry this well into the future. So if we can, you know, integrate this experience with the future, uh, we're in really good hands. So uh, it's been really cool to see so many facets of the business. So know, if people up. if people want to get involved with Verizon, where do they go? Do they just go to Verizon.com? You can do it a few it ways. Or? What's nice is, so Verizon.com for all of your needs in general. Uh, but yes, I think it's Verizon.com slash careers if you wanted to look into that vantage point. Um, we have recruiters that are available on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great resource. That's how I happen to get the job there. Um, I applied through LinkedIn and, and went through that process as well. Um, and so there are a lot of traditional ways to do it in that respect. Um, and Verizon has a ton of really great resources to help potential um, interns and employees connect with the careers of their future. Great. Well, we're coming to the end of our show. Okay. And uh, usually I ask my guests, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the kids that want to get into media communications, things of that sort at the college level, what advice do you want to give them? I think when I interned at Sports Illustrated, uh, it, it was still relevant advice to what I do now. And uh, then a then senior editor was just like, just, just can do what you're doing and then bring people's attention to it organically. You know, in other words, in my case, it was just right. And so he had actually recommended instead of going to journalism school, which I could have done and it would have been fine, just work at a small weekly newspaper and get paid nominally, but get paid for it and do the same thing. So it's really the same advice no matter what your trajectory may be. It's just do it, you know, or find the right people to help you do it. And most people are tremendously generous with their time if, if you're genuinely interested in pursuing those careers. So do it and then and also don't give up. And if you want to give up, that's OK, too. I did it at in my late 30s and I found a completely new career. It's never too late to pursue what you really want to do. And I think that's the most important advice. And if you're a parent, support that because that's the only way that it's going to be fully embraced and, and success can be maximized in that. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming hey, on the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time. <laughs>